Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let me just find the mains lead so I can plug the phone in. Oh yes, what a lovely day. It's the last day of the year. 22nd, oh the, you'll know that, you see, because the date will be on the video, won't you? See, I always say the date, and then I always think, no, they'll know that. It's a fantastic sunrise, there's some really low cloud, it's been pouring with rain, and the sun as it comes up is just shining on the sides of the clouds, so they've got a very, very dark grey blue underneath, and a very, very light, slightly pinky orangey sides. So, uh, yeah, last day of the year, so I thought I'd sort of take this as a opportunity to look back. I know if you are uh, been sort of following my videos in 2020, you'll know that I haven't really posted all that many. Um, and that's because we've had a very good year, we've been very busy, you know, I've had a lot of time to sit around encoding videos. That's the thing that takes the time. I mean, at work we're in an innovation centre, so we've got a reasonably fast internet, but... Uh, uh, 100 megabits, uh, although it's probably shared, but um, uploading them to YouTube is not that much of a problem. And uh, since uh, you know, I've upgraded quite a few of the components, I've got a new Pixel 4a phone, so horsepower on the phone and storage on the phone to a certain extent is not really a problem now. Um, and uh, uploading onto the computer is not a problem, it's just uh, editing them takes you know a bit of time not so much time when, when you've sort of got used to it and you've got all your titles are all sort of pre-designed so all you have to do is change the text and then, and then put them on the video uh, but um, the thing that takes the time is then uh, processing the or re re-encoding the whole project to go online at YouTube and that to be honest with you I mean like for a half an hour video which is what typically mine are 25 minutes half an hour could take uh, you know 45 minutes it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of work anyway I bought a new computer now and uh, it's got some uh, NV ME RME or something uh, RAM which is very quick it's got a 2070 super graphics card which is the graphics card does a lot of the work with regard to the processing the fastest program for processing is a thing called um, da Vinci uh, but which is a professional program which is a nightmare to use because they you know they're unapologetically designed for video professionals and movie makers and not at all for uh, amateur YouTubers and that's the problem the uh, programs like Sony Vegas uh, Pro which the amateurs like me like which because they're easy and intuitive to use um, take ages to process everything because they're not optimized the professionals want uh, encoding which is quick because they you know it's the, it's the boring part of their job waiting for the job to be encoded so they use tools which are obviously got more features but are less easy to use but are run on multi cores so if you've got four core processors then all four cores of your um, a job of processing at the time same time but that's difficult to program because if you want to do a, a job a single job and you want to divide it up amongst four people to do it for you then uh, someone's going to have to keep track of who's doing what and hand the job out and check that that bit of the job's been done and then put the job all back together again into one piece you know so so it's a bit like me driving to work you know it'd be it would take me a quarter of the time if I could split it up into four bits and do all uh, quarters simultaneously but it's just uh, not as easy as it sounds you know <coughs> so anyway, but I mean, but with this new computer, what I'll do is I'll um, probably I've got quite a few episodes waiting to be processed, so I'll probably process them over Christmas and on the new computer, and uh, um, and then upload them. But you, you're um, nothing's ever in the same place, you know. I've got the fast internet at work. 
I've got the big storage at work, the NAS, the big NAS. Um, the fast computer's currently at home, where I've got a slow internet, so I can bring the storage home and then do all the processing, but then I'd have to take it all back to work and upload it on the internet there, and I don't want to spend the Christmas holidays at work processing videos. I suppose I could do it all. No, I can't do it remotely because the fast computer's at home. So I've always bought the fast computer home for Christmas because, um, well, in the old days, uh, obviously, uh, <laughs> I only had one decent computer and the uh, fastest computer tended to be the work computer. Uh, so, because it was, you know, the business bought it as opposed to me personally. And I used to bring it home for gaming and then take it back again in January. And that was also uh, so it didn't get stolen, believe it or not. <laughs> You know, there's always a chance that someone's going to break in and nick all your IT. And IT is not cheap. I mean, now NAS, for example, cost about, I don't know, six, seven, eight hundred pounds. And it takes eight drives and each drive is over a hundred pounds. So you're looking at probably the best part of two grand's worth of investment just in one network attached storage. And we've got two of them because the one of them backs up onto the other one over you know, over the day. Uh, by which I mean uh, it's, there's eight backup jobs. One for each directory. So for example, my personal directory gets backed up at one o'clock in the morning. The surgery directory gets backed up at two o'clock in the morning. All the photographs and videos get backed up at three o'clock in the morning. All the software gets backed up at four o'clock in the morning. So, and that's the way it works. Anyway, um, IT is a funny thing, you either do your own, in which case you know how to do it, or you don't do your own, in which case you uh, haven't got a clue. Well, that's fair enough, you don't have to do your own IT. I just happen to have a personal interest in it. So 2020 has been a reasonably good year for us. We were really struggling quite hard uh, in the five years prior. And that's because it's not a level playing field, you know, you've got on the one hand, you've got the corporates who don't have a revenue model, they have a capital model, which basically means they buy practices, they, they put them together in groups and they sell the group and make a big profit. And when they sell and make a big profit, then that pays back the borrowing and it also um, gives them the profit. So on a day-to-day -day basis, in terms of like the amount of profit they make on a filling, they don't really care. All they care is that they don't bleed too much money um, which is obviously cuts into their profit when they sell the group. Let's get a bit of warmer going on the windshield because we are... Here we are. We are fogging up a bit in here. So, so you know, all the time you're uh, competing against corporates who uh, are are not that bothered about being, being uh, profitable on a day-to-day -day basis, then uh, you've got a problem, haven't you, competing with them? And then on the other hand, you've got the National Health Service, um, which have got a pretty much the, the other way of getting money for nothing, which is that they can print money. <laughs> they just print money. The, the government gives the uh, Bank of England an IOU, and the Bank of England then... Uh, Gives the Bank of England a load. Of, uh, the Bank of England gives the government a load of money, which they then spend, and uh, that's how you know a lot of the inflation in the money supply is created. The Bank of England, uh, of England will tell you that the commercial banks uh, create money because when they give you a loan, say they give you a loan for ten thousand pounds, then then you get ten thousand pounds, and uh, you, your liability is the liability to the bank. And the bank um, bank's liability is your liability of ten thousand pounds to repay. But on the other hand, they've got a credit on their balance sheet, which is an outstanding loan, which is an asset. So the whole, you know, the two sides really balance each other out. Well, in the same way, I suppose, as the Bank of England's um, uh, IOUs from from the government balance each other out. The only Differences. I don't think the government has ever has got any intention to repay that money back. So they call it borrowing, but it's not really borrowing. It's basically it's just uh, what they call monetizing debt. In other words, you the government spends 
money and uh, and uh, uh, sort of uh, spreads it out amongst everybody who already owns pounds by just printing more pounds. So the value, the purchasing power of the pound goes down. So everybody suffers. Everybody who's got anything that's denominated in pounds is, is financing the government at the moment, government expenditure. So, and you're quite, you hear it quite frequently from people when they say, um, you know, and you say, don't you worried about the government, you know, increasing the money supply by 13% this year? And they'll say, yeah, you know, our poor grandchildren, they'll have to pay all this back. And you're like, no, absolutely, absolutely they won't. <laughs> you're paying it, you're paying it right now in the value of your, all your, your money, your wealth, your pension, your savings, your deposit account, uh, you know, anything that's paid back to you in pounds has gone down 13% this year because the money's been devalued, debased. The purchasing power of it has been debased. Now, now you might say, why doesn't that show up in consumer price inflation? Um, and that's a good question because, you know, you would think logically that is the uh, consequence, isn't it? But in fact, uh, it takes a couple of years to show up in consumer price inflation. According to Milton Friedman, six months for everybody to be really happy and then 18 months for everybody to realise that their input costs have gone up, so they're going to have to put up their output costs. And also, of course, the government manipulates the uh, CPI, so, because it's used for the, as a baseline for a lot of wage settlements and pension settlements and things like that, so uh, it's not in their interest to... Uh... In fact, they used to use the, the retail price index for all these wage settlements, and then um, they didn't like that because that includes, included housing, and housing was uh, embarrassing. Housing was going up. The purchasing pound, power of the pound was going down so fast that the, power, the, the, per, the amount of pounds required to purchase a house was shooting up so fast and that was included in the retail price index and so what they did was they moved over to the consumer price index or the CPI uh, because it didn't include um, it didn't include uh, housing so uh, and then so the CPI was therefore lower so as a result pensions and uh, index link pay rises and things like that mainly in the public sector went down for a few years but then of course now it's um, now they don't even like the CPI <coughs> so so uh, yeah so we're stuck on the one hand in the small independent private sector we're stuck on the one hand with people who don't really care how much money they make because they're going to sell the practices as a group on one side and uh, people who can uh, pretty well print free money on the other side and therefore don't care <laughs> what they buy because they're not buying it with their money. So, and the patients are, has there been much of a sea change in the patient? I had a patient in yesterday. Uh, I mean, you, you get a lot of patients in who say, uh, you know, oh, you just can't help find an NHS dentist for love nor money. Um, you know, and that's been true since 19. 92 <laughs> it's, I've been hearing that and so that's not that's not that unusual but you know occasionally you sense there's a slight sea change and uh, someone came in yesterday and we've now, we now give away £10 to anyone who recommends a patient to us um, but if they're a patient of ours we credit their account with £10 but we had someone came in who had been recommended by someone who wasn't a patient of ours so what's happened is our sort of our fame and our reputation has spread within the community to the point where people have got our details tucked away up there uh, just in case they or anyone they know or who asks them needs a good dentist. And uh, so I said, you know, who can you remember who it was who recommended you? Obviously thinking if they're a patient of ours, we can give them a credit under the £10 scheme. And they said, oh, I don't know. Uh, I said, do they come here? And, and she, the bloke said, no, no, I don't think they do, actually. But I asked around and said, you know, where could I, where do you think I could get X, Y dentistry done? And they said, oh, you can get it done in first impressions. 
uh, but they're private and he said well you know but you know private dentists are cost a you know your arm and leg and your firstborn sort of thing and they said no no actually the, the prices are quite reasonable by which I assume they mean they've done a bit of comparison you know rung around a few other surgeons and found out that the other surgeons are more expensive than us um, you know so by reasonable I think you know like we charge about two thousand pounds for a crown uh, implant supported crown including the crown um, and I don't think they could get similar prices elsewhere probably two and a half or something but you know anyway I'm just going past the um, <coughs> Operation Brock <coughs> the um, massive massive great um, air, former airport at Manston they've still got some helicopter activities here but no uh, aviation uh, now owned by River Oak Strategic Partnership an American firm that wants to try and bring flying back but in the meantime they've got I think storage space for 800 lorries there because it's all gone a bit pear shaped at the channel tunnel because um, we've discovered this new strain of coronavirus that's a bit more infectious and so President Macron who's being a right pain in the queue uh, has decided that not only is he going to force the Brexit talks to go right down to the wire but um, but uh, he's also decided that uh, he's going to suspend all traffic freight traffic from the France to the UK for the next two days and uh, you know bearing in mind we're talking 22nd December so the earliest they'll reopen it to 23rd I doubt very much whether the and they're mostly French lorry drivers that's a stupid thing they're uh, yeah it's all lit up over there like a uh, hundred golf driving ranges and I can see some lorries there already you can probably uh, you hear some lorries going past they're all every lorry for Dover is being sent here to be queued so, um, yeah, so there's been a bit of a, you know, an increasing acceptance, let's put it this way, that, uh, there's a COVID testing centre, if I keep coughing, I'll have to pop in there. <coughs> I think it's just the talking and the, um, do you want to go? It's the talking and the uh, humidity and the, um, oh yeah, lots of lorries now, lots of lorries. So I might have to change the way I come to work. Well, it doesn't matter because it's my last day at work. In fact, I'm only working in the morning. I'm only working in the morning because it was uh, my granddaughter's birthday today. And so we were supposed to be going to a birthday party this afternoon, which is now cancelled. And then um, we were going on Santa's train tomorrow, the 23rd, which is now cancelled. <laughs> so it hardly seemed worthwhile coming in for the morning of the 24th which is when we would normally finish Christmas Eve lunchtime so uh, that's it now we're done so we've got to, I kept today free really this morning free for emergencies so we have booked it up a bit we've got about three or four checkups and one filling I think um, but ton of ton of work booked in for the new year all queued up you know Right, the car's waiting to reverse out. There you come. There you go. Oh, now she's going up the pavement. I say she, that's very sexy. So, moral of the story is, I can't see. Moral of the story is, if you live in a house and you have to park on what would have been the front garden, then please reverse in, please reverse in. Because, hello, please car, ambulance. Reversing out is it's just a nightmare. You know, it's just not, it's not worth it. Although I'm having to stop because we've got all these massive lorries coming through. So it's not like stopping to let her out has <coughs> lost me my place in the queue. Find you driving around here is not like driving in London. You know, 
it's all uh, much uh, Oh yeah, no, I definitely can't come through here. Yeah. This is ridiculous. They've got these big, big, big lorries coming, coming up here now, and uh, they can't. Uh, the problem is they're all left-hand drive, so if they come across a slight left-hand bend, uh, they can't see. They can't see round the bend. Yeah. I mean, this is a pretty little road. This is a stupid little road. For lorries to, to, to be like a major route artery for, for Operation Brock. Anyway, not my problem. Not my problem. I'm on holiday. Honestly, if they put me in charge of things, they would work. That's what I always say. But they don't, so they don't. Well, my bit does. My bit's done very well this year. You know, and I think it's like you might say, oh, well, yeah, well, that's a fluke because of COVID. COVID shut everybody down and, you know, in the private independent sector, you're a bit more, we're a bit more flexible, you know, we're a bit more, we can pivot to use the jargon. Oh, another ambulance. So, you know, I, I don't think it is. I think I'm a great believer in market forces. And I think the way, I think how I would describe it is that um, the market will win in the end. I mean, it might not win for a long time. It might not win for all of the time that you're trying to fight it. And there's this old saying that the market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. And that's really designed for people, traders who are sort of betting against the market that it's going to move in a certain way. And that's true, the timescales are long. But a National Health Service that is so inefficient and so uh, inflexible and so uh, centralised and micromanaged and sort of so Soviet, central Soviet in its approach will collapse. You have to look at something like the Soviet Union to understand what I'm talking about. You know, it, was, it, it survived, didn't it, from the end of Second World War for probably 50 years and then it collapsed. And, and the NHS will collapse, unfortunately. And that's the only way that it will, it will end. Because, uh, or, or perhaps what will happen is the small private independent sector will just eat it up, you know. And people will stop going to NHS hospitals where they're getting the wrong leg cut off and their x-rays are always lost and you never see the same person twice and throat cancers get missed. Uh, all the things I know, you know, I've seen. Um, and they'll just go to a private hospital, which all, like I, like I aim to do, will, you know, I'll, I'll be able to say to people, yeah, well, you can go to the local wing of the, the private hospital. And people say, oh, no, that's going to cost an arm and a leg, you know. And I'll be able to say, no, actually, no, their prices are quite reasonable because now more people are using them, you know. As more people use them, and understand that uh, they're, you know, become less entitled about the fact that they pay national insurance, and therefore they should be, they should have all their treatment done for two pence on the national health service. Um, perhaps that's the way the NHS will die, or just uh, become less relevant to most people, and, and perhaps a safety net for people who are really are absolutely desperate and have got no choice at all, which is which is very close to what it's becoming in dentistry. Right. So, um, I mean, you probably won't realise this, but by the time you get round to this video, then there'll, there'll have been a flood of videos on, because I'll have done them all, and this will be the last one that I'll upload. Or I might upload them in reverse order. I don't know. This is the thing, isn't it? It's exciting. That's the sort of thing about this. You can... There's a lot of black cars around. You can do... You can do what you like, can't you? When you're your own boss. Might not upload them at all. Might be talking to myself. Who knows? Hope not. Anyway. Anyway, I wish you a good, uh, a happy Christmas, and, and uh, hope you had a good year. And uh, I'll talk to you in January. Bye.